Hi everyone, okay, this is David Norwood against Sean Marsh, which was played at a tournament in Walsall in England in 1992. Norwood is a strong English grandmaster, and I couldn't find out much about Sean Marsh, but I guess we can assume he's a reasonably strong player as he was playing against Norwood in an official tournament. It was a fantastic game anyway, as you'll see. Norwood had the white pieces and he opened with g3, which is in itself unusual. He's a specialist in the King's Indian attack, and that's what the game transposed into. After d5, knight f3, knight f6, bishop g2, e6, and white castling. And then followed book development for a good few moves. As follows. It's all normal for a King's Indian attack, which is kind of like the King's Indian defense except it's with the white pieces so you have an extra move and that was the last book move with bishop b7 and then came uh, h4 and here Marsh castled queenside which wasn't too wise considering that Norwood has been shadowed on the king's side so after castling the bishop will become a violent attacking force bearing down on the uh, black king as you'll see as the game develops. So then came uh, a3 which is the beginning of a pawn storm with uh, these pawns here which is a fairly standard way to attack when the kings are castled on opposite wings as is the case here. So h6 and then h5 which is hindering black from pursuing a pawn storm himself. Now rook dg8, c4 and d4. Then b4 and it's the continuation of the pawn storm and g6. If instead c takes b4 then a takes b4 and if bishop takes b4 then bishop b2 and white will get the pawn back fairly easily and the open b file will be very useful for attack so it's best not to take at that stage and uh, g6 is played instead. So then came b takes c5 and b takes c5, which was a mistake really as it opens the b file and favors white much more than black. But here was knight takes c5 and the knight is at a good outpost at c5 and black's defense is fairly easy and in actual fact he's better here in terms of position. Play might continue, h takes g6, rook takes g6, six, and bishop b2, and Fritz gives, at the very least, a slight advantage to black, so definitely preferable to b takes c5. So then came h takes g6, rook takes g6, and rook b1, just taking control of the open file. And then h5, which wasn't best in this situation. Equality could have been achieved simply by playing knight d8. And after knight e4, it's completely equal. So h5, and then knight e4, and h4. And if instead of this stage, you see this pawn is attacked more times than it's defended, but if, say for example, knight c takes e5, then after knight takes e5, knight takes e5, rook takes b7, queen takes b7, and knight d6 check, picks up the queen, and a winning advantage after say bishop takes d6 and bishop takes b7 check king takes b7 bishop f4 and uh, the knight's attacked three times and if it moves then the bishop's falling so knight d3 is the best move and after queen takes d3 is easily winning for white so then came bishop g5 bishop f8 knight takes h4 rook g g8 knight f3 rook h7 which was intending to double rooks on the open h file with some attacking chances but remarkably there wasn't time for that and uh, the game went on here knight d6 check bishop takes d6 e takes d6 queen takes d6 bishop f4 and queen e7 which was a positional blunder that gave white a strong advantage in every continuation but at this stage was e5 and after knight takes e5, knight d takes e5, bishop takes e5, and queen d7, white is still significantly better, but 
not as much so as in the game continuation when Norwood is about to launch a spectacular attack after queen e7. First of all he sacrifices the exchange with rook takes b7 which is the strongest move in the position and his compensation for the exchange is the fact that his light squared bishop now cannot be counteracted by a light squared bishop of uh, blacks and also that the, uh, the uh, black king is brought into the line of fire after it recaptures with king takes b7. So then comes queen e4 with very strong threats firstly on this knight after this knight moves and also threatening the rook on h7 here um, and to counter this Marsh played f5 and here Norwood played an incredible move that made the game famous and if you want to try and spot it then stop the video now okay what he played was Queen takes c6 check, which is a decisive sacrifice that breaks down all the resistance for black and leads to a force mate in eight moves. There's uh, only one move for black now, which is of course to recapture with the king. And now the mating net is weaved, first with knight takes d4 and double check from the knight and the bishop here. And the power of the bishops is obvious here as they stop the king from retreating by controlling adjacent diagonals here and here. And again in this situation there's only one move for the king which is b6. And after that came rook b1 check which is another powerful move and the net is being weaved around the king. So king a6 was, uh, well there was one other move actually. Uh, king a5 was also possible here, but then it's mate in 5, which bishop d2 check, king a4. If king a6 instead, then bishop b7 is mate. Um, so bishop d2 check, king a4, and then bishop c6 check, king takes a3, bishop c1 check, king a2, rook b2 check, king a1. If king a3, then knight c2 is mate, which is king a3 is the only other move there. And anyway, after a1, then knight c2 is made. And that was similar to the game continuation. After uh, rook b1 check came, king a6. And then the bishop b7 check, king a5, which is the only move. Oops. Um, bishop d2 check, king a4 again is the only move. And then bishop c6, c6 check, and the king has to take the pawn as the only move. And uh, bishop c1 check, king a2 rook b2 check and now no matter where the king moves the knight gives mate um, after the game continuation was king a1 and then came knight c2 which was mate so it was just a brilliant game from Norwood who showed great foresight in being able to see that he had a force mate after sacrificing his queen and just a, well, a winning attack with his mostly minor pieces I'll uh, replay it so you can see it from start to finish. I'll put the threatened squares on as well. Here we go. Yeah, it was an unusual opening with G3. Uh, Norwood is known for playing G3 with the white pieces and often g6 as a defense with the black pieces and also this style of um, this closed game and gradually building up with his pieces like one user on um, chessgames.com referred to it as building a house and uh, it's a style that I like and a style that he's famous for and uh, well it was very effective in this game anyway as you saw there there's a queen sack, it's brilliant. And after that, the mate is completely forced, no matter what black does. So, yeah, brilliant attack. Okay, that's it. I hope you enjoyed that. Please leave any comments or thoughts. Thanks very much.